So our goals um, for this morning uh, would be to first understand um, uh, the forms of bullying, uh, lots of different forms of bullying. It may not be the traditional uh, idea that you have. There are a lot of different forms. We're going to talk about that. Understand what we can all do to prevent um, and intervene in effective ways with bullying. Um, to discuss how to create a culture where bullying is uncool. And um, last, um, she says she channels Lady Gaga and Gandhi with this one, um, uh, to, to get everyone to be bold, brave, um, and see the world um, in a way in which we can, we can change um, the world. Uh, so those are our, our simple goals for this morning. Um, and um, I'll start off by showing you a really cool picture that um, has Sue right here. I don't know if my can you all see Sue back there? She is the one right behind Lady Gaga. Um, she's had a lot. It's been a very exciting um, couple months for her and getting to be involved in um, Lady Gaga's Born This Way Foundation, which I'll talk a little bit about later on. And, and we could all probably discuss Lady Gaga's fashion choices and maybe everyone doesn't appreciate her all of her music or her particular choices in clothing. Um, but she has created this with her foundation with her mother um, with the vision of creating what she says a kinder, braver uh, world where youth can be safe. And I think that is something we could all agree on. One of the ways to do this is to really partner with the schools. I know many of you are from schools and organizations and um, um, something that uh, Sue has been working on for a number of years. Back, um, it's been um, about 10 10, 15 years now that she has been working on uh, Target, a program, Target Bullying, um, which is this ecologically based um, prevention and intervention program in schools. And this is uh, a program that is coming out of the University of Nebraska, and um, it is a way to help schools collect and use data to make decisions about how to address bullying within the schools. One of the issues with bullying is that it occurs in many different ways. It is a very, you'll hear me say this a few times during this talk, it's a very complex and complicated um, issue. And um, so uh, one of the ways in which Sue has been working and other colleagues at the University of Nebraska have been working with this target bullying um, to develop a program in which um, the schools can get specific feedback about what is happening within the schools. Um, and so she works, she and others can work with the schools to help them use data to determine what strategies would be best. Um, so for instance, uh, one of the uh, issues they examine is where is the bullying taking place? What kind of bullying is happening? Um, so if the bully, they can come in and do um, collect data from the students and faculty and figure out what's happening within the schools. And once you have that information, you can be much more targeted um, about addressing the bullying issues. Um, for instance, she gave me an example of a recent school where all the bullying or most of the bullying seemed to be taking place in hallways during classes. It was happening um, with um, certain groups of kind of ki popular kids and it was mostly um, female on female or uh, male on male and mostly within grade settings. So they, uh, she went into the school, found this information out and um, because of that was able to say a whole school-wide program probably won't make the most sense and they were able to target specifically what that school um, needed. Um, and so that's something that's uh, uh, been going on at the University of Nebraska and with Sue and her colleagues. And um, with this, they're able to come in and, and reassess yearly what's happening within the school and really keep taking, taking tabs on it and addressing very specifically what could be done. Um, since UNL has entered the Big Ten, um, if this may not be as big of a deal outside the university as it is within, but it is a big deal to us at the university, and um, we are really positioning ourselves to be leaders on the topic of bullying. Uh, it, in other universities, it's, it's obviously a big concern also and a big research topic, but UNL has certainly has some very interesting and specific skill set that are um, positioning it to be a, quite a leader in this field from um, uh, teacher education to legal to um, education administration. And so we expect to see great things coming out of UNL uh, about bullying. So that's just kind of a little brief background on what's happening and what Sue's been doing and why she's not around right now, unfortunately, one of the reasons. Um, 
And so this morning, uh, this talk will come a lot from her books that she has and from especially the education.com website. That was just a special bullying issue on education.com. So I'd encourage you to make a note of the education.com if you haven't been on there yet. Um, it was just released, I believe, yesterday, a big special issue on bullying. A number of resources that are on there, I'll reference a, number, a, a few of those throughout the talk. But um, these are some specific resources that Sue wanted to make sure you had. Um, stopbullying.gov, um, and then uh, these books that she has listed are all available on Amazon. What's so exciting about what Sue and her colleagues and, uh, and what's happening within bullying is that it is becoming um, a real practical, real world concern, and people are taking notice of the research. This, I, I think this conference is a perfect example of that. Um, obviously, Lady Gaga's foundation is another perfect example of that. I and mean, so it's really exciting to see the translation of research into practice. Uh, and a lot of what we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you today about is that translation of years and years of research that took place in um, cramped professor offices <laughs> that is now moving into actual schools. And we're getting to see some um, uh, really fantastic results from it. Um, we have, uh, in fact, the po obviously you know popular media attention, not just um, pop stars, but there's the, the new movie coming out that I'm sure most of you are aware of, the movie Bully, which is going to be released nationwide. Um, uh, Education.com partnered with Lee Hirsch, who's the director of that movie. It's being released across the country, um, I believe it's March 30th. Um, I think Kirk and um, Laura Smalley were part of that movie, and we are certainly very honored to have them here today, and um, uh, you'll get to hear from them later, I'm sure, uh, about that. Um, so it's an exciting time for researchers to be able to take their uh, research and see it being uh, brought to the public and actually maybe something good be able to come out of it. So why were all these researchers focusing on, re on bullying for so long? Um, this Practically, we know that there are a number of problems with bullying. A professor in a little cramped office did this study uh, and found that um, if bullying at 14 predicts violent convictions um, between 15 and 20, drug use between seven, 27 and 32, and just generally unsuccessful life, so just unhappiness uh, by age 48. Really, we know that bullying... Um, is related to some pretty significant negative outcomes in a person's life. It's also been uh, connected to both homicide and suicide behaviors, um, with a lot of that variance being described or being um, explained by depression. Um, victims and, bull and bully victims are certainly more depressed and have lower self-esteem than non-victimized use. Um, and bullying is certainly as a major uh, public health concern. So. Um, it certainly has negative consequences, and it's worth our attention to examine it. Um, in addition, it has some real significant costs. It is widespread. Uh, some uh, estimates suggest uh, bullying impacts negatively impacts three out of uh, four students during their school years. That's quite a lot of students. Um, it has uh, been recognized as a mental health problem. Um, the psychological consequences, as I mentioned earlier, um, are involved with bullying, a severe depression, suicide, antisocial behavior. Um, these are serious uh, mental health concerns. It creates feelings of helplessness, anger, frustration, um, contributes to a negative school climate, meaning kind of the way that the school is generally, uh, which of course we know is related to lower academic functioning. Um, and um, the other problem is uh, adults often do not know how to effectively respond to this. Um, it is not just um, from a health perspective expensive, but also um, from uh, it's expensive because of dropout, suicide, and litigation. So obviously it's an important issue. All of these, which you are all know this while you're here, I'm sure, um, certainly worth attention. So next, what is it? We often throw around this term bullying. What do we mean by it? There are specific de definitions that researchers use when they're thinking of bullying. Specifically, um, it's unwanted aggressive behavior that involves a real or perceived power imbalance. That's an important component with the definition. The behavior is repeated 
it has the potential to, to be repeated or it has the potential to be repeated over time. Both kids who are bullied and who bully others may have serious lasting problems. In order to be considered bullying, the behavior must be aggressive and include uh, the, that imbalance of power. Again, that's an important con uh, construct of it. Kids who bully use their power, such as physical strength, access to embarrassing information, or popularity to control or harm others. Power imbalances can change over time and in different situations, even if they involve the same people. Also, another really important concept is that repetition. So bullying behaviors happen more than once or have the potential to happen more than once. It can include making threats, spreading rumors, attacking someone uh, physically or verbally, um, excluding from a group on purpose, and can be obviously perpetrated electronically through cell phones, computers, gaming, Facebook, all of that. We know that many students are involved in bullying behavior and there's kind of this, what we refer to as a continuum on which they're, in, they're involved. Um, the bully perpetrator um, is a person who's actually doing the bullying. A victim or target is the one who's being bullied by others. A bully victim is both. Those, those people are the ones who bully others and they are also being bullied. A bystander is someone who sees it and um, the no status, not involved, these are the kids, the very rare kids who say they don't, haven't seen it, they have not been involved with it at all. Another or a really important um, issue with this continuum is that research shows that kids move in and out of these roles. So they don't get their name badge and stick with this one role. There's, this is something that they can actually move in and out of and depending on the situation, depending on the grade, depending on um, uh, the, uh, a lot of different factors, they may be one or the other of these on, on this continuum. So for instance, a child might bully others in third grade uh, when they're starting to get to the, the older age, but then be victimized once they get to sixth grade. So um, it just, it can vary, it can vary greatly by the situation and by other developmental factors. So these roles are certainly not fixed um, and are uh, uh, certain, can be certainly fluid. So you've heard me talk for a little bit. I'm going to get you guys to do a little activity in your head now. Um, I want you to, you can close your eyes if you're sure you won't fall asleep, and um, I want you to picture what you think a bully looks like. Uh, as part of a, some pro bullying programs with children, this is an activity that's done. It's referred to as draw a bully. So the kids are asked to draw a bully, and, um, and then that helps the, uh, the uh, researchers or persons doing the intervention to kind of figure out what's going on and what kind of uh, bullying situation this child is involved with. So in your head, um, you've all just pictured a bully, hopefully. I'll give you an example of um, one that uh, a child has done in, an, uh, in some research that Sue has. And I don't know if you can make it out very well, um, but his very top thought bubble over on the left-hand side, it says, um, I'm being bullied, so I'll bully him. And he is uh, kicking uh, that one down there that says little kid at the bottom, and he's kicking it, hit the little kid laughing, um, he's got big muscles, as you can see his big muscles in there. So what's, what's very clear from this picture though is that this person is saying, I've been bullied by this kid, therefore I'm going to bully him. This is that perfect example of the bully victim. Sometimes when we think about bullying, we think, well this is, you know, I've heard all of this before, I know all of this, this is, everybody knows it's wrong, everybody knows we need to, we need to be more careful, we need to be vigilant, kids know that they shouldn't be doing this, uh, parents are all on board, we're all together on this. And so I want to give you an example to show you that that may not always be true uh, and that it is still very much a real problem. Uh, Sue was quoted in a um, live science article uh, Often when researchers do research, uh, research the media to asks them some questions about it, and so I think that's what this was about. And so this is the quote from our article, um, a, a section from the article. While it can be hard to cope with the emotions bullying brings, Swearer encourages parents to focus on solutions for their child. She said, going in angry and yelling and screaming, which I have seen, does not help anyone. 
Um, Swearer said, everybody just gets defensive. Parents should realize that bullying is a complex social problem and the situation may have been developing for some time. So that's what was posted online and are you, you're all familiar, I'm sure, with reading news online. Um, this new feature that we have in our, in our culture, which is the comment section, uh, this is now uh, this whole new way that people can um, interact in fairly anonymous ways often. Um, so what I have next are some examples of some comments that people made. So this is what um, uh, the quotes from Dr. Swear were on uh, online, and then the, the section below uh, were the comments that some, some people made. Um, for instance, the first one was, no, but going in swinging usually stops this beat yes and its tracks. This is both stupid and exploit exploitable. I hate to say it, but we need bullying in society. It's what separates the weak from the strong and motivates people to rise above. If you can't rise above, then you're the runt of the litter and you'll kill yourself. Society has just become stronger with one less weakling. Uh, next, violence tends to solve bullying. I'd rather my kids uh, threw someone who was bullying them into a beating rather than have it come back to screw them later in life by lowering their self-esteem. Uh, people might as well know up front that I'll go straight to jail about my kids. Some brat wants to bully my kid, I'll show him or her what a real bully looks like. And when my son was growing up, I told him I'd better not ever catch him bullying another, and at the same time, I better not ever catch him being used as a punching bag. Mixed messages, right, with that one. This is only a small selection, sadly. Um, I, ra I rather my son got in trouble with school authority for standing up for himself than just stood there and took crap from other kids. When all else fails in the civilized setting, sometimes we have to go back to the old-fashioned methods of sending a message the bully will surely understand. Um, it's liberals like yourself that allow bullies to continue as you and your kind are soft and handling, handing out consequences to the bullies. Only way to stop this kind of behavior is to make it so it's not fun anymore for the evil sheep that do the bullying. Um, hurt them, hard and fast and bad. And if you are too weak to do it by yourself, then get the help of the other kids who have been victimized. Catch the bully alone and make it so it's not fun anymore. Here's a a particularly interesting one. If a fist won't work, grab a weapon. They have to be stopped, period. Face it, we don't need these animals. I think it certainly um, demonstrates, as this picture says, when you're in deep trouble, say nothing and try to look inconspicuous. We can't, we can't do that. So we're talking about less than a year ago, these were the kinds of comments that people were making online. They felt strongly enough about this that they would uh, take the time to make one of these comments uh, to this article. Um, and so, um, you know, certainly a lot of them um, uh, put forward this kind of punishment-based uh, idea. Uh, we need to punish them. And certainly what we'll talk about as we move forward is that it doesn't seem like punishment is probably the best way to deal with it. Um, and um, we're really kind. Of, we're we're probably we're really in trouble if these kinds of attitudes are let allowed to prevail. Um, we have to recognize that bullying is an extremely complex social issue. Um, it takes coordinated interventions um, across an entire ecology to to stop bullying. So what do we do? Um, there's this uh, idea in um, put forward by um, a psychologist back in 1979, the social ecological model. Um, and basically what this does, this idea, if you can uh, make it out, the child is at the center of the circle, and then you have the family, and then the next layer is the school and the peers, the next layer is the community, and the layer after that is society and culture. And so what this is, uh, what this represents is that we all have our own unique personalities. Every child is different. Um, uh, children live in families with their own dynamics. They go to school with their, uh, their own unique school climates and school situations. Um, they have their own certain peers and all of those peers have their own certain personalities and they come from their own families and own uh, neighborhoods. Um, each community has its own unique characteristics uh, and um, the idea is that the resulting bullying behaviors develop out of this complex web and nesting of nesting doll kind of uh, 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 of of um, 
the, the child. So for example, an impulsive child with one parent who has three jobs um, and, uh, and doesn't get to interact with their parent that much, who then goes to an unorganized school that doesn't have a tight-knit um, uh, teacher-student uh, coordination um, in a, a community that may have more crime than we would want, may have may be much more prone to be involved in bullying than um, if we were able to just change one of those situations, one of those conditions for that child. So again, extremely complicated, um, complex web of a system that we have to address. And just saying we need to stop it isn't going to address all of those layers. So, the question we have to ask then is, what are the conditions that allow bullying behaviors to occur? What are those conditions at each of those levels, at each of those layers? So given the social ecology, we need to find out what conditions allow bullying behaviors to occur. So if we change just one factor, if we just put that kid I mentioned in an organized school where teachers are very involved and there are um, uh, uh, ways in which uh, that child act, um, has activities that he or she is interested in that may be enough to change the, the culture, the entire, um, uh, the entire sphere for that child. We know that there are um, a number of factors that can play into bullying. At each of those um, levels in that circle, so at each of those levels, so back on this page, there, at each of those levels there are certain factors that can contribute to bullying behaviors. And I want to give you um, some, this is going to be kind of the research-based portion of the talk. So we'll go through and look at each of these different types of Factors. For instance, gender, males involve more frequently than females. Um, uh, we know that grade level is important, so bullying increases during transition periods. So for example, from elementary school to middle school, as a big transition period where we see um, an increase in bullying. Social skills um, is kids who have um, at either end of the spectrum. Ethnicity, students in ethnic minority are at a greater risk for being bullied. Religious orientation, so religious minority youth are also at a greater risk for being bullied. Sexual orientation, we know. Um, LGBTQ youth are at a greater risk for being bullied. Disability status, so students in special education are, are also at a greater risk. Conduct problems also um, seem to increase uh, bullying risks, uh, and certainly depression and anxiety, so those mental health issues. So those are just some examples. This is certainly not an exhaustive list, but just you can see the years and years of research and many professors and little offices um, uh, looking at this issue, and those are from just the center. So differences with the children. So maybe if we could just change one of these factors, we might ha change the bullying outcome for a child. Um, within the next level, so family factors also play a role in whether or not a person is involved with bullying. For instance, uh, domestic violence. So we know that modeling of aggressive behavior is a risk factor for bullying. If you see this happening at home, it also increases the likelihood that it will happen um, at, uh, for the child. Authoritarian parenting. Parenting styles that are punitive and unsupportive are also um, uh, raise the risks of bullying. Poor parental supervision. Um, lack of supervision is related to um, both bullying uh, perpetration and being bullied. Physical discipline, um, the use of physical discipline is correlated with bullying. Physical abuse, um, physical parent, parental physical abuse of children is linked to bullying also. Sibling aggression, so sibling bullying at home is associated with bullying at school. And parental drug and alcohol abuse, you might not be surprised to know that that also is related to bullying, and marital discord. So this is now this second layer. We've looked at, here's what the child, the factors that are related to the child. The child, um, any number of different factors can be involved in whether or not a child is involved in bullying. This is this next layer, then, all these different factors that contribute to a child being involved in bullying at the family level. 
And again, not an exhaustive list. This is just some examples for you. Again, to try to really emphasize how complex this issue is and how many different factors are playing into that child that you have before, them, before you. School factors certainly are also uh, important. I know many of you are from schools, and I'm sure these um, school factors won't be a surprise to most of you. So for our school factors, again, not exhaustive, but teacher attitudes. So when teachers ignore bullying, we see higher rates of bullying. In addition, the way teachers respond to bullying, so teachers, have, if they have less empathy for victims of relational bullying, uh, they are and, and are less likely to intervene. That also can contribute. Um, general classroom characteristics, so the idea that um, Negative peer friendships, poor teacher-student relationships, um, lack of self-control, poor problem solving, increase that, have higher levels of bullying. We also know that academic engagement is involved, so schools with lower levels of bullying have higher levels of academic achievement. School climate, negative and punitive school climates are associated with higher levels of bullying. And a sense of school belonging. Students who feel connected to school are less likely to be involved in bullying. So those are the school factors, again, not exhaustive, but I think you, those, again, for those of you who work in schools, probably none of those are that surprising, or maybe you, you can recognize those and have seen examples of those in the students um, who you interact with. But certainly any of these certain factors could change, and we could um, uh, change the outcome for a student. Peers certainly also have an effect. So the friends that uh, students interact with. Um, aggressor victim relationships, it's important to understand bullying within um, that larger context. So bullying can be the route to popularity for some. And so the, the peer relationship can certainly play a big role in whether bullying is taking place. The whole idea of birds flock together, um, this bullying occurs in the peer context we know. It's rarely ever an isolated individual incident. Uh, and so peers play a big role in the way in which bullying occurs. Delinquency is another issue, so it's not just bullying, but it's also often related to delinquent behavior, something much more serious, legal, uh, uh, legal involvement, criminal involvement. Alcohol and drug use, also problematic negative behaviors. Victims and bully victims are more likely to use drugs and alcohol. Um, peer norms, when bullying is accepted by peers, it is more likely to occur. So if the peer group in which the child is interacting with seems like bullying is just totally fine, then it's, it's going to be much more likely to occur. Victims and bully victims report lower, lower levels of social support than bullies and peers not involved in bullying. So we see from this that there are a number, of, again, a number of examples of peer support, peer level influences for bullying. Changing any one of these factors may be enough or may help to contribute lowering bullying. Um, in the community, so um, we also have... Uh, um, the, that last kind of level, that community societal level in which there are influences um, for bullying. We really have a lot less research on this. It's quite expensive and difficult to look at societal community level um, issues. But we do know that um, neighborhoods play a role. So unsafe, violent, and disorganized neighborhoods are risk factors for bullying. We also know that media plays a role. So um, a meta-analysis is something where you take a bunch of studies that people have done and kind of combine them all together and look at the effect of all the studies combined together. So this meta-analysis of media violence and aggressive behavior certainly suggests a, uh, a relationship between violent video content and aggressive behavior, especially playing mature video games um, in, for middle school students. Youth um, who are positively engaged in their communities are less likely to be involved in bullying. So a, a youth who lives in a community where there are activities for youth to do, where there are places where they can volunteer and be involved is going to be a good thing in terms of reducing bullying. A community that has um, un, uh, intolerance, so homophobia, sexism, classism, racism, all of those um, uh, negative behaviors um, all create conditions within a community where bullying is much more accepted. 
All right, so for our uh, another little break from um, talking, I'm going to get you to picture a bully again. See if your image has changed at all. So picture another bully. When you did that, did any of you picture something that involved more relational rather than, you don't have to raise your hand, but just think about it, relational rather than physical. We know that relational uh, bullying is uh, very damaging. So this is the draw a bully picture from some work that Sue and her colleagues have done. And this person, it's probably a little difficult to make out, but you can see basically what they have the kind of mouth bubbles going on. And what that is meant to focus on is that they are, there's no physical violence happening here. It's all relational, um, verbal um, bullying that's happening. And these are certainly all forms of bullying are damaging. And verbal is, is also especially damaging and hurtful. Um, and one of the things that has happened with the, the media and bringing all of this to the national attention is there have been some um, very uh, uh, difficult um, uh, national cases that have happened because of relational bullying. With all that behind us, so we know that there are, it's a really serious problem. We know that there are a lot of different factors, complex web of factors that are occurring. Um, we really have to um, have a major paradigm shift to the way we deal with this. So we can't just say it needs to stop because you can see it's, there's a lot going on. There are a lot of factors. Just saying stop it doesn't really um, address all that's going on and all that's happening. So we need to move away from thinking about um, punishment-based strategies. A lot of those comments that um, I showed you from the, the online article were definitely that punishment-based. We really need to move away from thinking um, that punishment-based strategies will just stop bullying. In fact, um, the American Psychological Association, APA, examined zero-tolerance policies that schools have implemented um, a few years ago, about six years ago in 2006, they developed a task force, looked at these zero tolerance policies. So this idea of, no, if, you, if we see bullying, that's it. There's, we have zero tolerance in our school for bullying. Um, found that these policies were really ineffective. They weren't stopping. They weren't addressing the multitude of different factors that were involved with, with a child being involved in bullying. Um, we really need to recognize the complexity of bullying um, ac across that whole social ecology, across that entire big um, and nesting uh, circles that I showed you um, and, and really consider the whole picture. Um, it starts with everybody, every individual making a commitment to treat all humans with dignity, tolerance, uh, and respect. One of the ways that bullying has been brought into the national media is because there have been extremely tragic cases uh, where uh, um, Bullying has been related to uh, suicide um, with children, with teens. So there have been um, research, there's been research to examine this. And this is from the Youth Risk Behavior Survey, uh, an article that was looked at and examining um, the types of victimization and um, suicide attempts um, that the, the victim reported. One of the things that has come out in the media is a, a big focus on cyberbullying, right? And so that's been the, the Phoebe Prince case was one, certainly, um, and, and even more recent ones. Um, and that this cyberbullying is this very big risk for uh, suicide. Um, we can see from this data that um, the conventional victimization uh, and conventional bullying are really the even more of a risk. So cyberbullying obviously is um, also very problematic, but it's not just cyberbullying where this is occurring, where this is then leading to, or this is related to um, suicide. What's important to also note is that the research suggests that Depression seems to be a really big factor related to this. When we're thinking of bullying and depression, we need to really also be considering mental health concerns and mental health uh, attention. Um, we obviously don't know if kids who have been through this were depressed, but certainly the data here uh, demonstrates that it is very complicated. A number of children are quite depressed and have mental health um, uh, issues.
Um, and so it certainly is an important factor to remember. We know that this link between bullying and mental health, um, Remember that the definition of bullying is that intentional mean behavior, that imbalance of power, and the repetition. With that, with students who have, or, or, or youth who have experienced that, um, have this, these, again, mental health concerns. They, they are hopeless, frustrated, depressed, have anxiety issues. For those who bully, um, they're angry, depressed, social anxiety. So these are mental health concerns, um, certainly. And importantly, the bully victims really seem to have it the worst. Um, this is something that newer research is, is um, examining. Um, so these are the ones who are involved on, on both sides. Um, often it, they're missed a little bit too, but they seem to really have both sets of problems, both sets of mental health problems. So with all of that concern, we have to be um, vigilant to not do what Lassie did. So if you can't see this, there's someone drowning, Lassie, get help. Lassie sees his, his, um, his therapist. So kids who are involved in uh, bullying, um, we know that's linked to depression and anxiety and these mental health concerns. Um, they're more likely to experience depression and anxiety. Uh, and so if you are in, involved in, in, with students or youth, um, it's very important to recognize and refer them for treatment of de depression and anxiety. And what um, we have here is this reference to workbook publishing. And so um, this, uh, the next slide will give you some more details about the resources that are available. These are resources that are available to anyone, not just administrators, these not just uh, guidance counselors, that anybody can get these um, resources. So uh, first is, um, uh, one referred to as uh, action, and again, these are all from uh, workbook publishing. So the first one is related to depression. Another is related to anger management, keeping your cool. Um, coping cat is related to anxiety. Um, cognitive behavioral group treatment for adolescents with social anxiety, again, is a social anxiety. And um, uh, lastly, just generally, these are all great resources for anybody to, to get, but remember, the whole idea and this focus on mental health is to be sure that you recognize this is a mental health concern and a referral to a school counselor, psychologist, psychiatrist may be a very important line of defense for a child who is involved in bullying. So even though parents and anybody can order these, it's very important to remember that um, involving mental health professionals is often a very good idea when you're dealing with bullying. All right, so aside from the workbooks, just as a general resource for you, what can you do? Well, we have to create healthy, caring social relationships. Um, it really does take a village. This, as you can see, our, our, our circles that are presented, it's not just the kid isolated by themselves. There's a whole lot going on. And so it really does take the community, the schools, the parents, the siblings, the peers. And we all have to make a commitment to be positive role models and citizens. Commitment to ongoing training, like what you're doing here. Um, commendable to be here and learning about this and trying to um, learn as much as you can to respond appropriately. Using resource and staff time well. So the counselor should be able to um, counsel uh, instead of other activities that, they may, that may sometimes consume their time. I think I hit a nerve. <laughs> um, integrate <laughs> bullying prevention throughout the curriculum so that this isn't just something we deal with on the third Thursday of the month, but it's something that we, we recognize as an issue that um, has, to be, has to be addressed. Um, also, to ensure that adult relationships in schools are healthy, I um, think about, I'm a big Glee fan, so I don't know if anybody watches Glee, but I'm probably just, if, if you don't, this is going to mean anything, but there's some, there's some p teachers in there who are like the perfect example of bullies to each other, right? So um, th that's, uh, that's what I thought of when I, saw, when I saw this slide that Sue had made, that we need to be good examples of, of how to treat each other also. And of course, um, we have the Gandhi quote, be the change that you want to see in the world. So on education.com, um, the big website that was rolled out 
um, just yesterday, the, the bullying portion of this, this very special issue that Sue has been a major player in, and this is one, one of the big reasons why she's not here with you today. Um, there are a number of different lists about things that people can, that, that you can do. Um, this is that parents can do to help eliminate bullying. Um, there's things that parents can do if their child has been bullied. Um, there's some others that relate to um, if your child is bullying. So there are a number of these kind of top 10 lists that are available online. And we're going to go through a few of them. So if any of these spark your interest, make a note. You can definitely go and read a lot more about each one of them. So just for a flavor of them, 10 action items all parents can take to help eliminate bullying. So anything any parent can do. Um, make sure that you talk to your kids. Spend time with the kids. Go to school. Know what the school um, is like. Have been there. Interact with the school, especially during recess, lunch, time when you're allowed to be there. Be a good example of kindness, again. Um, learn the signs, learn to notice when um, your kids are changing, uh, when they are acting differently. Teach your children about cyberbullying. This is something that is obviously newer, digital citizenship uh, notions, so we have to be aware of that. Um, develop rules that make sense for that. And also, I think the last one is a, is a really important one. Spread the word that bullying should not be a normal part of childhood. Um, so this is if your child has been bullied. They have a, ta a 10 list for if your child has been the victim of bullying. Um, make it safe for your child to talk to you. Um, talk with a, a teacher or principal. Definitely don't go it alone. Uh, seek out um, help from others. Help your child become more resilient to bullying and follow up daily with your child. So those are just kind of a flavor of the examples. I didn't read them all to you, but certainly there are, um, the, the, there's this list and then even more resources with this list for parents who um, uh, have found out that their child has been bullied. So this would be a great resource for you personally, if you're a parent, or to provide for the parents um, who you interact with. What if you figure out that your um, kid is actually the bully? Um, and so the education.com website has a list for that also. Um, it suggests having an honest and firm conversation with the child, really you know, putting, putting it out there and discussing this with them. Really make a commitment to address this. So this isn't just probably gonna be a one-time discussion. This is going to be a commitment to address it and help them find healthy ways to um, resolve conflict really uh, monitoring the child's behavior closely. And again, on education.com, there will be additional resources and, and tips of how to do this uh, and how to go about taking these steps. Um, number eight, be realistic and patient. Again, this isn't gonna be a one-time conversation and it's just gonna be over. So this is something that will take time and effort and commitment. Again, don't be afraid to ask for help. Always important to remember. So for our um, school personnel, what can you do? Some realistic strategies for bullying prevention and intervention. And the first is to make sure your school has an anti-bullying policy. So um, this is for parents, community members, school personnel. Make sure that you have some sort of policy that addresses anti-bullying. Um, the uh, second one is, again, this adults modeling healthy behavior. I think that that's said repeatedly because it is so important. We are examples for youth, and so modeling that healthy behavior. There are, uh, number four mentions videos and resources. I'll give you some examples from resources. People have been working very hard on this issue, and there are many, many resources that are available to you, so I'll, I'll provide you with some of those. Certainly the education.com website is a great resource for you. Um, so know that, I guess with that, know that this has been something that people have been focusing on and spending a lot of time examining. So you really don't have to figure this out on your own. There are lots and lots of resources for you and you should definitely take advantage of those. This is a, an example of a bullying prevention parent plan from here in LPS. So this is from um, uh, one of our middle schools. And um, it's just a great example of a comprehensive bullying prevention plan from a middle school here in Lincoln. It includes um, the district policy, the student pledge, and some resources. So this is kind of the front and back of it. And then um, in here, it has um, the, the different tiers in which uh, a student 
might have, uh, might have intervention. And I don't know if you can make it out very well, but the bottom tier is um, the comprehensive response. And so this is um, really the uh, all students involved in these kind of programs. So this is something that's the, the school-wide comprehensive uh, bullying interventions. Um, the next is the focused up here. Students ha who have um, re reported problems receive this kind of focused intervention. Um, and then personalized is the next tier. Students who need a lot of support will receive that level of intervention. So what are some best practices then that can be implemented through these policies? Um, the first is that all of these, um, on, along the continuum of bullying, it's a mental health problem and we have to develop effective mental health promotion efforts in the schools. So it's, not, um, it, it's a much greater, larger mental health concern. I'm going to said this a number of times, but this healthy adult role modeling. Um, how do you practice uh, conflict resolution in your own life? How do you treat people? Do you treat people with dignity and respect? How do we model these kinds of things that we want to see uh, youth, uh, how we want to see youth behave? Um, positive peer sibling relationships, also an important, very important component in bullying prevention. And those positive home school collaborations. So there's not the disconnect between what's happening with the school and with the home. Um, that there are healthy, positive relationships between parents and, and teachers. And there's um, that same positive relationship between teachers, students, and administrators. And I think the important thing that this is noted at the bottom is that this is, the emphasis should be on prevention. It, this, the idea is that if we can not have it happen, that's even better. So the best idea would be to prevent it and have it not ever start. If it does, there are some best practices with intervention. So our um, best practices with intervention based on some, uh, a, a large meta-analysis, um, again, a, a study that examined a lot of studies together uh, back in 2008, found that the following things were extremely important in um, intervening uh, uh, and in bullying intervention. So parent training. Um, uh, I talked a lot about you know, those top 10 lists of what parents can do. Some of that involves quite a bit of information for the parents. So parents understanding what their role is. So parent training is an, um, uh, part of the best practices for bullying intervention. Increasing adult supervision is also part of this, uh, what we know is a factor that will um, uh, uh, help uh, reduce bullying. Not using those punitive disciplinary methods, so this isn't a, a punishment issue, uh, and using those punishment type tactics isn't um, as effective. Home school communication is another effective best practice in bullying intervention. The effective classroom rules, again, effective classroom management, so the organized school. Um, and, and Sue has listed in here some use of training videos as another component, so training the kids. So we talked about parent training, but then there's also um, uh, youth training too, and I'll give you a couple examples of some, uh, some great video resources that might be helpful. It should be noted, of course, that this is a, a pretty long list of different things, and so we know that this is a complex issue. What works under certain situations may not work under others, um, but these are together kind of what has been modeled as best practices, the kinds of things that we should be focusing on to intervene in bullying. Um, and these are consistent elements across bullying intervention programs that, link, that have a link to bullying reduction. So a couple video examples um, for you, since that was one of the successful interventions. Um, the first is uh, the bully dance, and this is a one that is appropriate for elementary age um, uh, youth. You could probably use it with any age, but it's probably most appropriate with elementary age. Um, there's no language in it, it's all cartoon characters. Uh, uh, for a little bit older age, the middle school um, one is Stories of Us is a good example. There are a lot of different um, videos that are out there. These were just some that Sue pulled forward so that you guys could have some uh, specific resources. So Stories of Us Bullying, um, it is for primary and secondary, but generally middle school age. This was actually filmed here in Lincoln, and they use uh, middle school students from our own um, uh, school here, schools here in Lincoln. And what a lot of this does, you can kind of see the description up here, 
Uh, it's based, it's stories that the, the middle school students are telling and providing actual anecdotal stories about what's happening. And one of the really important um, issues that comes out of this for the students is it demonstrates that a lot of the bullying incidents develop from misunderstandings. And so um, this is something that the, the students can hear from somebody their own age and can um, maybe get a greater appreciation for um, just the power of misunderstanding. Uh, and how those misunderstandings can really mushroom into something much bigger than what was originally intended. And for high school students, um, one that Sue recommends is Let's Get Real. Uh, and there's also a curriculum guide that goes with that. Where do you go from here? It's, um, the, the recommendation, the first step at least, is to really figure out if you're in a school or um, working with a group of students, figure out the scope of bullying victimization. So what is actually happening? Um, again, I talked about this at the very beginning. This is some research that uh, Sue has been working on, Sue and her colleagues have been doing for a long time. And it, the, the issue is we don't need to do a full-blown school-wide program if, if that's not what's happening. Um, and so the, the goal is to be um, making decisions based on data, so data-based decision-making. We know that rates of bullying vary across um, schools and communities. Um, uh, they can range anywhere from 10 to 75%. So what works in one school one year may not work in another school or that same school another year. And so just to do a little plug of, of the um, actual survey that Sue and her colleagues use quite a bit here in Lincoln, um, they uh, have the bully survey. It's www.bullysurvey.com if you want to take a look at that. This is something that can be done on an and an, can and should be done on an annual basis to examine what's happening within the schools, and then from that data, an actual implementation plan can be developed. Um, it really helps the the kids, the teachers, administrators, parents, everybody kind of get a feel for what's actually happening, and then the way we address it can be targeted for that particular year, that particular that particular um, school. There are several other servers in the market. This is just an example for you of one that's being used here. Uh, with this, there's a partnership between the researchers um, to conduct assessment of the bullying behavior. So ex coming in and examining what's happening within the school. Um, this is done anonymously and school-wide. They use um, self-report, other report, and observation. So it's not just from one person's perspective. It's not just the teachers just saying what's happening. And from that, they can develop a picture of the scope of bullying within the schools and then um, develop classroom presentations based on what they know is actually happening within that school. Uh, from that, you can have specific interventions for bullying and preventative measures, very important preventative measures, to uh, create an anti-bullying climate to move forward from that point. Certainly, share, again, that school parent communication, um, that, that line of communication being open, these kinds of things would be presented then before a, PT, uh, a PTO. But the main goal to emphasize is that it shouldn't be this one size fits all model. So um, creating this database decision making, um, individualizing the program uh, and interventions that take place. So what are some realistic goals that schools personnel can have from this? So first, increase awareness about the detrimental effects of bullying. Um, an important concept that hopefully came out from what I've been talking about is that this is something that should be happening regularly, um, not just we're going to take this up once a year. Um, make sure the school does have some sort of anti-bullying policy. Um, uh, make sure it has provisions for intervening. and. Um, Make sure that the parent handbook matches what the kids are getting so that we're all um, together on the, same, uh, on the same plan. Know that zero tolerance policies are not effective. Um, and um, consider restorative justice uh, when um, working with youth who are bullying. Um, when we say zero tolerance aren't effective, that doesn't mean that there's no, that, you know, the, kid, the bullies should just not have anything happen to them. One of the um, uh, examples that has come out is, uh, you know, kids having consequences, something like community service, but figuring out what will work within each uh, school. Throwing the book at the kids for bullying isn't going to be the answer, but there is, there will be something that will work. 
There are a number of different, just like there are videos, a number of different intervention programs that have been tested and they are um, supported from research. Uh, steps to respect, second step, bully busters, I'm sure some of you have heard some of these. But these are programs that um, researchers have examined and uh, gone into schools and done and then looked at pre and post or different ways of, of examining if they were able to see reductions in bullying. So it's important to use uh, programs that have gone through this kind of research support uh, because at least that way we know that they, ha they have some level of success. So all of these are, um, have been empirically supportive, as empirically supported and published in um, academic journals. We know that adults have to take um, a leadership role in bullying prevention and intervention. You've got to be the ones who really spearhead the anti-bullying um, uh, charge. Determine whether what, what is happening with bullying um, using either the resources that I mentioned before or some other way. Um, getting the parents involved and empowering, importantly, empowering the students to make the change. Um, some examples of big anti-bullying campaigns that I'm sure many of you have seen, these have become extremely popular in the media. And um, so some big bullying uh, campaigns, examples that you may have heard of, stomp out bullying is one. These certainly have increased awareness of bullying so that we know that bullying is unacceptable. These are great. It's wonderful to have these posters up in classrooms or uh, wherever, um, but this is just obviously a very small piece of the puzzle. So uh, hopefully you recognize that this is a much larger issue than what can be handled than with a poster or one public service announcement. Um, but these will certainly be a piece of that puzzle. So stomp out bullying is one. Stop bullying, speak up. Um, in the, uh, pa this past summer, Facebook announced this new anti-bullying partnership. So this is using that media that some people are, are quite frightened of and um, actually using it to try to uh, target the issue and um, educate parents, teachers, and kids about preventing bullying. I think you can actually go online and take a pledge, even as an adult, to say I'm going to stop bullying and I'm not going to stand up, I'm, I'm not going to allow this to happen. Um, but certainly we know um, one of the reasons why Sue isn't here is because of the media attention on this topic. And so that's all great. You know, having that attention is great. But again, it's just one piece of what needs to happen. Um, the NEA's uh, Bully Free It Starts With Me is another. This is for the teachers. Um, their big message is just one caring adult can keep bullied students from dropping out of school. Uh, one caring adult can potentially save a boy's life. So this is that idea that if we just change one factor, if we just change one piece, maybe that'll be enough um, in this very complex web. One of the difficult things with these campaigns um, that, that researchers and others have noted is that the older students think of bullying as a uh, childish problem. And so high school students um, aren't seeing, they don't, it's, they say, oh, bullying was something that happened in elementary school. So this is um, 17, I think this is from 17 Magazine. And they're referring to it as digital drama instead of cyberbullying. So using different types of language to try to pull in um, some of our older teens who maybe don't see what they're doing as bullying uh, when, it's, when it certainly is. Uh, so bullying can have kind of this childish connotation to it. So it may be necessary to think of it in a different way, to call it something different, to really reach, reach these older teens too. The uh, Born This Way Foundation is the new Lady Gaga Foundation that um, I showed you the picture of from the very beginning. Um, this is uh, from, uh, it was launched uh, just this past month. And they have um, uh, brought together scholars and um, trying to uh, create a campaign that will address and prevent and intervene with bullying. Some have been geared towards adults. This was uh, from a few years ago. If we don't stop bullying, who will? This was stopbullying.gov. And these were a lot of like posters that were put out that were basically saying, you know, we have to be the adults in this situation. Um, so uh, adults, teachers, um, adults have to get involved in trying to stop this also. So those are some examples of campaigns that I'm sure you're familiar with. I guess what, what the important um, note with that is that while we see these posters and it's great to think about and they draw our attention, recognize that that's not going to be 
having a poster up isn't going to, to prevent it. It's not going to be what stops it. It's a much more complex issue than that and takes a lot more um, concerted effort. So in summary, bullying obviously is a serious problem of all age levels um, with pre-adolescence particularly at risk, particularly at those transition areas, uh, transition times. Um, Cyberbullying and conventional bullying are interrelated and often coexist and certainly both have negative consequences with them. Uh, adults need to be better informed in order to be credible resources for young people. I think that example of older teens not really liking the word bullying is a great example. So we may not have ever realized that and so we have to be informed about it so that we can speak the, the right language to talk to the students and youth. Bullying in all forms, verbal, physical, relational, cyber, are connected to mental health difficulties. So recognize that this is a much bigger issue than just what we can punish a, a child for, that this often has a large mental health issue component with it. Interventions need to be tailored across the social ecology, across that whole big picture of circles that I showed you, the individual, the family, the peer, the school, and the community. Each one of those levels has a contribution and factors that are related to bullying behaviors. And the commitment to change is ongoing and never ends. So um, it's, it's not a simple solution. There's not some simple um, key magic pill that we can have that will change this. It is something that we have to commit to, to go. Um, and so she has, finally in the words of Lady Gaga, she told me that she would usually sing this, so I'm sorry. <laughs> if anyone wants to do that, uh, you're more than welcome to take the mic. But it does have some good, it does again have some, the message behind what she's trying to say is basically if, we, if everybody was nice, bullying wouldn't exist. Um, if everyone was tolerant uh, and uh, accepting, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have this issue. So really we take that to heart at UNL with um, Sue and her research, her colleagues and those of us involved in uh, bullying research trying to um, uh, help schools, kids, parents stop bullying. And you know it is something that is uh, a long range um, goal and uh, a, a, a lot of um, uh, it's not something that's simple, it's not uh, quick, it's ongoing, certainly, um, but it is something that we, we know we can do. And, and I'm encouraged by the number of people who are here and the number of people who are interested in this topic and this program that's going on, that this demonstrates you don't see this as just a quick uh, public service announcement, that this is something that you're committed to really learning about and trying to change the culture uh, of uh, the, the culture in which bullying is acceptable. So I, um, I just want to thank you for being here and encourage you and uh, um, hope that the, the rest of your uh, day you can learn and, and leave here much better equipped to address this issue. Thank you.